Hello and welcome to yet another episode of Blender SideQuest. Today we're going to be using geometric nodes to create a procedural stove flame setup. Before we get started, I really want to thank all the people who've been supporting me on my Patreon and also all the artists who've been buying Switcheroo and Uberglow on Blender Market and Gumroad. I hope you like the product and without wasting any more time, let's get into it. Okay, so here we are in Blender and the first thing that I've already done is animated this null to go back and forth in uh, a single axis. Now this I've done to act as a trigger for our uh, animation to act as a gradient, to create a gradient. Because if you see in real life when you light a stove, it doesn't just come up all at once. It starts from the side where the spark is and then it travels the other side. And to be honest, it looks much better. So. Next thing that I'm going to do is add a new mesh circle, scale it down and press Ctrl A and apply scale. Now the first step as you might have guessed is to turn this mesh into points so that you can instance flame on it. But the first thing I would suggest you to do is turn this mesh into a curve. Trust me, this will save you a lot of hassle in just a couple minutes. Because the next step would be to convert these curve to points. And this is what I was just talking about. The curve to points node gives you these tangent, normal and rotation outputs, which are uh, easier to access than just getting a mesh to points node, in which case I wouldn't have had them. It's not that hard to get access to these uh, attributes or fields, but uh, if you're just getting them automatically, why go through all the hassle? So this is just a tip, not a pro tip, but uh, a little life hack sort of but let's move on next thing that I need is the actual flames you know so for the flames I first thought I would be using curve line but uh, why go through again why to go through all the hassle of curving that uh, line with a float curve or any other method possible so I'm directly just gonna use a arc so I'm going to increase the resolution by a lot I'm going to keep the start angle at zero and I'm going to keep the sweep angle to around, uh, let's say 140, 150 right now. We can change it later or might as well create a new group input that will help me change this uh, later. And now we have an arc that will act as our flame. Next thing that I'm going to do is add a instance on points node. And I'm going to use this arc as the instance. And if we view the instance on a point node, it will give us something weird. Now what's happening is that the arc we just created, its origin is still at 0, 0, 0, which means when this arc is then instanced onto these points, it's instancing from the origin, which is far away from the beginning end of our arc. For that, I'm going to add a transform node. And the radius of our arc is one meter, so I'm just gonna translate it to negative one meter. And now the origin of our arc is at 0, 0, 0. And if we hit head back to the instance on point node, we'll now notice that the arcs are instancing from the right point. So the next thing that we need to tackle is the rotation of these arcs. Arcs are right now aligned to the XY plane. So first thing that we need to do is align them to XZ or YZ plane. And then we need to uh, change a specific rotation of every instance with respect to the point on the circle. Let's just do it and you'll understand it better. So I'll add another transform geometry node and reset it and change the Y rotation to 90 degrees. Okay, so now that all the arcs are facing sort of the right direction, we need to change the rotation of every instance with respect to the point. So that's where these outputs and curve to points are going to come useful. I'm going to take the normal output. I'm going to use a Euler to vector and plug this into the vector and take the rotation and plug it into the rotation. They're still not uh, aligned well, but as soon as I click on Y, there we go. We now have a perfect flame. All we need to do is reduce the scale for which I'm going to add a value node and increase it Oh, even more. Let's use 0.01. That feels right. Now I could also increase the count or let's just take the count and give it to a group input so that we can control it from outside our node group. Let's add a realize instances node which will now give us actual points on a curve to play with so that we can use a trim curve node and we can play with these values to make the animation. 
Okay, remember the animated empty I just talked about in the beginning of the video? Let me now show you how I'm going to use it to create a gradient in our scene. Let's add a grid just so we can visualize this better. I'm going to control click on the grid so that we can see it better. I'm going to add an object info node and I'm going to select my null or empty to set the uh, type to relative. Now that we have the object info, let's create a position node and let's add a vector math node. Set it to subtract and subtract the location of the object from the position. And there we have it. We now have an animated UV uh, slash gradient in our scene. But to visualize it better, I'm going to add a gradient texture to our scene. And there we go. We now have a gradient texture on our grid with a uh, good enough fall off. And if I remove my connection to the grid and add my trim curve to the viewer, you can see that this gradient is now also available on our curves. If I take this factor value and plug it into the end of our trim curve, you can see as soon as the empty crosses the threshold, these curves start growing or going back into itself. But the problem is, as you can see in the grid, the fall off is way too smooth. What I can do is a lot of things, but right now as a hack, I'm just going to add a scale node, increase the scale. And if I go back to the trim curve and that works like a charm, you can see how the gradient helps to give us this organic growth effect around the uh, circle, which looks better, but we can do a little better, I think. So let's add another trim curve and create a noise node. And let's set it to 4D and plug in scene time seconds. After the noise texture, I'm also going to add a map range node. Because you can see if I just plug in the factor to the end of a trim curve and I mute the first one, it just uh, it just trims a lot. We don't want that much flutter in our flames. So if I use a map range node, set it to smoother step and set the minimum value to like 0.8 or 0.9 and then plug this into the end, it uh, gives us a much better look. If I enable a trim curve again, it works fine. You can change these values for whatever you think is fine. Next thing that I need is to add a curve to mesh node. For the profile curve, I'm just going to use a line curve that starts at negative 0.01 and ends at positive 0.01, which should have given us something Oh, it works fine. Also, let's add a set curve radius node right over here so we can dial it better. Here's an organized node group which lets me change a lot of values, dial in a lot of stuff including the resolution, rotation of my uh, arcs or flame, the sweep angle, the wide spread of my flames, the height of my flames. A lot of things can be changed with this node group. Another thing that it does is uses the spline parameter factor and captures the at attribute from the original curve, the profile curve, combines them together into a UV map. We've all covered this in previous videos, how to uh, UV map curves. And let's head over to the shading tab where you can see these two flame shaders that I made. One is a cheap one, one is a better one. You can copy these settings uh, that they're not so hard to make. I just mixed between a transparent and emission shader to create this uh, leaf-like shape and create a gradient sort of exponential glow effect inside the shader. And I was done. If your scenes are looking pretty boring as mine is right now, check out my latest product Uber Glow on Blender Market or Gumroad or Patreon. Its compositor node groups will give you much better glow in your viewport compositor and give you real-time playback in your scene. Also, it's much better than EV Blue, so that's a plus. So that's it for this episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press the like button. If you didn't, press the dislike button. No problem. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.